T Smartphone Play Show is a dialogue between the host and the listeners about their relationships. This show is not an attempt to assess, diagnose, or treat any mental health or illness condition. Please consult your physician, psychiatrist, or psychotherapist for personal matters. Inner Voice. A heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujian. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Inner Voice Show. I'm Dr. Fujian Zain and have Sean in studio. This is a show about what matters most in life. Our minds, our thoughts, feelings, actions, relationships, and our fulfillment in this beautiful journey of life. So today in this show, I'll bring you the latest research on older adults being less distracted by negative information. And I think they're just, we become more positive as we grow older. Isn't that nice? Talk about aging gracefully. At least we see things positive when we grow old. Isn't that a good news? And then I'll speak to two celebrities. The first one, Maz Jabrani. He's a comedian. He's an actor and the host of Back to School with Maz Jabrani podcast. And then I'll speak with Naveed Negafon, who is an actor, the man of thousand faces. That's what they call him, the man of thousand faces, talking about two of his new movies, upcoming movies. You can call us on the studio line, 951-922-3532, if you really want to talk to the two actors and comedian. Be sure to listen to my podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Share it with everyone. Write your comments on them. Subscribe to them. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to talk about a particular subject, don't forget, call me or let me know. Email me and let me know who, you know, what subjects you want to talk about. We'll be right back with the tip of the week. I'm Dr. Fujian, and I have great news for you. I'm offering a special time-limited offer to anyone who's interested in online therapy or coaching sessions. I've developed the Awareness Integration Model, which allows in only 12 weeks to raise your self-esteem and confidence and let go of your thoughts and emotions that produce depression and anxiety for you. So call today to schedule your online session and save $600. Call me today at 818-648-2140. That's 818-648-2140. Or go to www.fujan.com. So tip of the week. You know, this week I've been witnessing how people react when they are lied to. None of us really likes to be lied to, right? So some people take it as it's a norm. Everyone lies, so do I. I expected it. I will lie myself sometimes, right? Some people become very offended and confront by making the person wrong and belittle them. Some feel betrayed and remove themselves from the person and judge them silently in their own mind. Some take it as, if it's an insult to their intelligence and get angry and retaliate. So what do you do? Really, think about it. What do you do when you are lied to? I have a suggestion. I suggest sharing with the person kindly and empathically that your world is a bit different than theirs and your recollection of the events are a bit different or that based on their previous sharing and what you know, there appears to be some discrepancy and we would like some clarifications. Letting someone know that you know that they're lying to you might actually help the person shift their pattern. I know that when we talk to pattern, parents about their kids lying, because every kid lies and every one of every human being starts doing this manipulation and lying and just to see how far can I get away with it, right? And usually when, we, when I talk to parents, it's like, well, when the first lines are coming, go ahead and let them know kindly and lovingly that it seems to be a discrepancy between or what you know is different. And don't reward 
anybody's lying by ignoring it because people lie in, because sometimes they're not safe. Sometimes they want to manipulate. Sometimes they want, they have alternative motives that they're not necessarily letting you know. But the point is that if you don't say anything to them when they're lying to you, you are giving them positive feedback about whatever their behavior is. So the person will continue. You can also ignore and with, with a person that you really don't know or you don't come across often. But in relationships where you are, are in a relationship where constantly working with the person, either at work or with family members, friends, mate, you know, children, um, this is going to go on if you don't let the person know that you honor actually transparency and you honor honesty. Um, so let them know. You don't need to make them wrong. You just let them know that you like honesty and you will trust them. You will honor them. You, it would be better if at least with you, they could be honest. So try that and let me know how it works. So far, it's worked for me a lot better than ignoring it. So the latest research, this is a good news, actually. You know how I've talked to you before about, I don't know about this aging business. I have some fears around it. It shows up for me as, oh, it's not going to be fun. But this new study gives us a little bit of a better feeling about it, let's say. A new study shows, this was in USA, that compared to younger adults, older adults are less distracted by negative information, even in the earliest stage of attention. USC researchers looked at emotion-induced blindness which refers to distractions caused by emotionally arousing stimuli. In four experiments using a quickly presented sequence of images, they examined how older adults prioritize emotional information. They found both younger and older adults demonstrated emotion-induced blindness, but older adults were more distracted by positive information and less distracted by negative information. The results were published today in Emotion. That's the uh, journal. So older and younger adults were distracted differently by the same negative images that happened and appeared for only a fraction of a second. Older adults seem to view their world with a filter that cares less about negative information than younger adults to the point that without even having time to think about and reflect on what they're seeing, they give less attention to it. So studies have shown that compared with younger adults, older adults tend to favor positive information more than negative information in their attention and memory. What has remained unclear about this long observed positivity effect is at which stage it impacts cognitive processing and it influences on processing other stimuli appearing around the same time. Participants in the USC study were shown a rapidly displayed series of landscape images and given the task to correctly identify the direction of one rotated picture. So those images were punctuated with irrelevant positive or negative images that appeared soon before the rotated picture. The positive images included babies or happy couples, while the negative images included disturbing or threatening situations, like a man approaching a woman with a knife. So both older and younger adults were less accurate in identifying the rotated landscape image after these emotional distractors. However, compared to younger adults, older adults were less distracted by negative and more distracted by positive images suggesting that a selective bias toward positive information occurs early in older adults. Visual processing. In previous studies on emotion, which involved mostly slower paced attention and memory tasks, older adults saw and remembered positive images better and negative images worse. The researchers wanted to see if that happens in early attention and found that even when images were presently quickly, Older adults were more distracted by positive rather than negative adults. So these older adults don't really have time to reflect and think too much about something being positive or negative when they're seeing them flash so quickly on the stream. But older adults have a sort of active filter when they're looking at things, prioritizing things that are positive and deprioritizing things that are negative compared to younger adults. 
So whereas younger adults may give special attention to information that has a negative spin, older adults may instead reserve their prioritized attention for something more positive. So by understanding how older adults change their priority for emotion, we may better understand the way the brain, particularly our attention, changes with age. Um, it was interesting because yesterday, I think it was, uh, it was on Farid Zakaria who had, um, who had um, an author who, um, the, the last, I don't know the name of the book right now. I will definitely find it for you. I think it's When. The, the book's name is When. And um, in that book, there's a lot of study that has come up about older adults actually becoming more happy because they were talking about what are the ages that happiness shows and satisfaction shows. And in the book states that, the, ha- the studies that the book says, that the happiness shows up around between 20s and 30s. And then, you know, between 30s and um, starts declining around 50s pretty much at its lowest. And then from 60s, it starts going up. Uh, and most people are becoming more and more happy as, uh, as they age, uh, depending on who they were as an adult. So in comparison with themselves in their younger age. So this also the study that I just read to you from USC could be a part of the same concept that people as they grow older, are no longer interested uh, in negativity or holding negativity. They are really more interested and prioritize and look forward in uh, having their life be more positive. So again, it's a good news for us who are getting older. Something is going to work. We'll be right back with Maz Jobrani, the comedian, actor, and the host of Back to School podcast. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He is impressive. He has acted in 76 films and television series, written, produced, and directed many television series and documentaries. Maz's first original Netflix stand-up special, Immigrant, was filmed at the Kennedy Center. He has also put out three other solo specials on the Showtime, including Brown and Friendly, I Come in Peace, and I'm not a terrorist, but I've played one on TV. He was a founding member of the Axis of Evil, Evil comedy tour, which aired on Comedy Central. Ma starred as the title a character in the award-winning indie comedy, Jimmy Westwood, American Hero. And he has co-starred in Disney's um, Descendants, uh, Sidney Pollock's The Interpreter, The Ice Cube's Friday After Next, with over 50 guest star appearances, Moz is regularly uh, seen on television most popular shows, Grey's Anatomy, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and Shameless. He's a regular panelist on NPR's and Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, and has given two TED Talks. He is the author of LA Times' best-selling book, I'm Not a Theorist, but I've played one on TV, and he has produced Everything Must Change, a documentary about his sister's battle with breast cancer. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Moz Jabrani. Join the conversation every Monday afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific for Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fujian. Dr. Fujian is a radio and TV host, international speaker, psychotherapist, life coach, and the author of Life Reset, The Awareness Path to Create the Life You Want. She brings you the latest research and interviews with experts in the field of cognitive sciences. Anyone who loves to grow and create growth for humanity gets a voice on this call-in show. Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fujian. Monday afternoons at 3 p.m. Pacific on Smart Talk, KMET 1490 AM and on KMET 1490 AM.com.
Take KMET 1490 AM with you everywhere you go by downloading our free smartphone apps found on the KMET website, KMET1490AM.com. You can also go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store on your phone to download the free app. Now you can listen live or play any of your favorite programmers' podcasts using your smartphone. Don't miss out on the free KMET smartphone apps. Go to KMET1490AM.com and download your free phone app today. Hello, I'm Dr. Fujan and I have great news for you. I'm offering a special time-limited offer to anyone who's interested in online therapy or coaching sessions. I've developed the awareness integration model, which allows in only 12 weeks to raise your self-esteem and confidence and let go of your thoughts and emotions that produce depression and anxiety for you. So call today to schedule your online session and save $600. Call me today at 818-648-2140. That's 818-648-2140. Or go to www.fujan.com. Inner voice. I'm Dr. Fujian Zeng. And guess what? I have Maz Jobrani with us. Hi, Maz. Hi, Dr. Fujian. I'm always on the run. <laughs> I know. I know. Every time I catch you, you are going somewhere, coming from somewhere, going on a show. But you know, the beauty is you always say yes when I ask you to come on my show. So thank you. Thanks for having me again. Maz, I love your podcast, the Back to School with Maz Jabrani podcast. I listen to it. You have amazing guests. Thank you. You know, it's interesting because I've been wanting to do a podcast for a long time. And now that I'm back doing it, I'm very happy because you realize there's so many interesting, amazing people doing amazing things. And... You know, the reason I call it back to school is because I want these people to come on my show and teach us about what they're experts in. And from, you know, Dr. Firuz Naderi, who, as you know, is uh, was part of JPL at NASA. I know he's supposed to send us to Mars one day. Um, uh, I think for some reason we're losing your voice. Yeah, the number there, well, exactly. He got us tomorrow. We've covered everything. Yeah, you have. It's been really awesome to listen to you. I learn a lot. And I know that you start the show with your son asking a question from them. As you said, that the whole reason why you started the back to school is because your son was asking you questions, which you really didn't have any answers to. And you figured, hey, let's get them to answer all of it for all of us, which you're doing right now. Absolutely. I think anyone who is a parent knows that our uh, our kids ask us these questions that we don't know the answer to. Um, and uh, and why not bring in experts to get the answers? Yeah. And Tehran is with you and Caitlin and you guys make it funny. So not only we learn, but we laugh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Dr. Fujian, I always tell my fellow Iranian uh, 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 um, audience members when I do a comedy show, I say, and it's free. So <laughs> yes. that's the best price. <laughs> yes, it is. So where? what are your uh, new, uh, are you working on a film? Uh, I'm working currently on writing a uh, TV show that we hope to uh, submit and uh, see, if, you know, it's, it's a long road. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Hope to try and at least get it, you know, uh, get some interest from the different networks. And I just got back from a long tour. I was in Australia, New Zealand, uh, Singapore, and uh, uh, Indonesia doing shows. How is it going around the world uh, being an Iranian-American? So uh, I know that in in the United States, things are shifting, you know, as far as how people view uh, the Iranians. Or uh, And I've talked to you before about that and how you handle it. But then how does this even work when you are abroad? You know, I, I was very uh, pleasantly surprised with it all. In Australia, there actually are a, a lot of Iranians there. So uh, I was able to have a lot of them at my shows. But I also 
had um, you know Lebanese and Indians and Pakistanis and and white Australians. It was a pretty decent uh, group that came out. Uh, we had some big big shows. Um, you know, in Sydney we had like fifteen hundred people. Melbourne fifteen hundred people. So they come out, they laugh, and the jokes translate. The things that were new to me, I'd never performed in, was um, Singapore and Indonesia, where the audiences were all Asians and. <laughs> They too were there and they were laughing and they were into it. And I honestly didn't even know there was a comedy scene in Indonesia until we went there and did it. And they had a comedy festival and um, it was amazing. I mean, Indonesia, for people that have never been, it's this it's the it's the it's the biggest Muslim country in the world. And it's uh, it's a poorer country. But I was so impressed with their um appetite for i can take the phone now because i've parked their <laughs> appetite for um for comedy and the fact that they were uh having this festival and they had a lot of local comedians performing in indonesian and i was on their international night and i think we had maybe a couple of thousand people show up so it was it's 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 all been very very pleasant and 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 positive is it different for you when you uh uh, when you perform in front of different groups, like do you do you have to become different when you do that? A little bit. The only the biggest difference is that I try to have some jokes about the place. So I had some jokes about my experience in Jakarta and how busy it is. It's I'd never seen traffic like that in my life before. It would be all these cars going, and then it was just the road would get narrower and narrower, and then suddenly it'd be stopped, and then there'd be hundreds of scooters passing by you. And then there'd be one guy in the corner trying to sell water. There wasn't even room. Like, he was like, here, here, buy the water. So <laughs> when you're telling them about that, they appreciate that you're doing material about them. You're the fish out of water. Um, and, then, and then after that, I was able to bring them into my story. I think I talk a lot about these days about, you know, raising kids now versus the way we were raised. So I think a lot of that stuff they can relate to. Um, although, in all honesty, it's funny because in America, we raised kids a lot more modern than they are still in some of those countries like i was in singapore and in this fancy fancy mall we saw this one asian mother just wind up and spank her three-year-old and that night on stage i said when i saw that i turned to my wife and i said you know on stage i go you guys i was here in singapore i saw this lady sm spank her kid and i turned to my wife i said we got to move to singapore <laughs> audience, yeah the audience laughed at that so they're appreciating that i'm observing their yeah. culture and bringing that into my show. But then once I've done that, then I can go into my material um, and just go from there. Well, I know that for us as therapists, we get trained very much to be observant. I mean, this is how we pick up moods, um, you know, innuendos, stuff that is happening with our clients. And then we can call it, especially things that are not um, really aware of. And one of the things that I've noticed about comedians, especially you, as I've watched you, I have followed you and many times when you have been in L.A., um, you have this keen observation where you see things, um, even in the audience, immediately and improvise and bring them in. And that kind of an observation, which is right there, like a present moment, and then being able to weave all of this, I think is one of your best uh, traits. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I've been doing this now for 21 years, and I think my um, interest in talking to the audience came because when I would first perform at the comedy store almost 20 years ago, they would give us the really late spots. So you'd be up at maybe 1.30 in the morning, and you would try and do your jokes as if it's a full crowd, but there was only five people in the audience. And so you would have to stop doing your jokes and start talking to them. And I think that that helped me learn to talk to the audience. And it's amazing when you talk to the audience how sometimes that audience will provide you with material that then becomes very good material in that moment. And so, yeah, I try to do that as much as I can. And I do feel that, you know, the stage is a certain amount of therapy for us comedians, but it's also our job to kind of read the audience and feel their mood. So as you said, you might look in the audience and there's a guy who's just been staring at you all night, not laughing. So just out of curiosity, you'll go, hey, are you OK? And that'll lead to some other joke somewhere. We're trying to have a bridal shower 
And uh, I actually asked you, everybody goes for bridal shower into Vegas and they have these kind of scenes of getting drunk and all of that. And we're talking, you know, we should have it in um, um, a comedy show. And then I remember I texted you, are you in L.A.? Because <laughs> I was oh, going to send yeah, you yeah, the yeah. whole bridal shower group. This could yeah. be a whole new trade, I'm telling you. Well, you know, we've had that. We've had people come at bachelorette parties. Matter of fact, one time I was performing in Beirut, of all places, in Lebanon. And um, I, it was funny because I think that someone hadn't told the bachelorette party that there was going to be a comedy show. It was in a bar. So I was, and it wasn't a comedy club. So they had me performing on top of the bar with all the alcohol behind me. And I was doing jokes. And while I'd be doing jokes, there was a whole bachelorette party going on in the corner and they weren't even paying attention. So it became this struggle with them. So we'd talk to them and then they would yell at me and then I would do a joke and then they would go back to partying and then I would yell at them and it became this whole thing. But it seemed like they had a good time. So I think that people do take that as, a, as an option, going to a, a comedy show. Uh, Maz, you are um, in a variety of um, venues of expressing yourself, let's say. You write a book, you have produced, you have directed documentaries and TV series, you write your own material everywhere, you write for TV series and uh, your own shows and comedy shows. You have acted in so many of the television series and movies, um, and now you are doing the podcast. Um, this might, this, first of all, you don't get burned out because you're so, you know, you're going everywhere and you're really expressing who you are in all of these other realms. But it also, my assumption is that it expands you. Um, you're not only your talent, but who you are as a human being. Can you say a bit about what? gets you interested and what makes you go from one thing to another? Well, I think all of it has storytelling in common, right? I think the idea is to tell my story and through the podcast, other people's stories, and hopefully through a TV show, elaborate upon my story and find other interesting stories that I can tell. So really, whether you're doing stand-up or you're writing a movie, um, you're telling a story. And a lot of the times when you're writing that stuff, you pull from your own life. Um, as a matter of fact, I was talking to my nephew who's sitting here with me right now. Uh, Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Cameron here. And he was saying, I, we were talking about how uh, when I did a joke uh, in one of my specials about going and picking a watermelon with my grandfather and how he would flick the watermelon to find out if it's ready or not. And when I'd done that, uh, the production company that, that helped me make that special took that joke and animated it. So suddenly we go from a stand-up act to a basically a cartoon. So the point being that when you're writing a book or you're writing a movie or you're performing, whatever, it's all storytelling. And it's what interests me. And I'm lucky to have been able to make a career out of what I love doing. Um, so I don't really see it as something that's tiring or something that's so different where I'm, I'm, I'm learning a new uh, uh, a new skill, uh, I just see it all as the same thing. It's just a different expression of yeah. that. Yeah. So say more about your podcast. I want people to know about it and uh, come and um, download it. So talk more about that so people know where to go and obviously iTunes. But Yeah, absolutely. So the podcast is called Back to School with Maz Jobrani. And uh, the idea is that we bring in experts from all different fields. So it could be something you're interested in. Maybe we'll bring somebody who is uh, someone who's a constitutional um, uh, uh, um, uh, law professor or something, uh, or and you might be interested in that. Or maybe you're not interested in it, but you listen to it. You go, oh wow, this is this guy's perspective is very interesting. So every week we have someone from a different background. We've been bringing in a lot of professors. We've been bringing in authors, people that have written books, and we pick their brain and they tell us about what they do and what they're an expert in. And then I have myself, Tehran, who is a funny stand-up comedian. And our third co-host is uh, a Caitlin. girl by the name of Caitlin. And we just try to interject questions or try to make it funny as we go. So the point is you could listen to it um, for an hour and hopefully learn something and be entertained. And people can find the podcast anywhere where podcasts are found. We have the video version of it on my YouTube channel, which is just mm -hmm. youtube.com slash 
where people can find on Spotify, on uh, iTunes, uh, anywhere, anywhere that podcasts are found. Just Google, uh, you know, uh, Maz Jobrani podcast or Back to School with Maz Jobrani and you'll be able to find it. And again, like I said, it's free. So people hopefully will watch it, will listen and watch. And if they do like it, I encourage them to either write a good review or give it a thumbs up because that helps us move up in their algorithms of iTunes and all those places. I remember listening to people who were from a uh, school system. They, uh-huh. I learned so much about uh, Los Angeles school system. Um, ta- you brought a professor that was talking about the environment and the um, concept of global warming. Yeah. Um, talking about guns and then music. So it's really a variety of uh, different people with from different backgrounds talking about, um, and you also brought so social conversations and political conversations from um, any type of ideas, which is really Absolutely. something people That's, learn. Yeah, this week we have someone, uh, every Tuesday we, we put out a new episode. So this week uh, will be uh, a lady who's a professor on gender studies. And I didn't know anything about it, uh, and I, but it, I learned so much and she was so amazing with her teaching. And so I really feel that if people are looking for a program that's entertaining and educational, it's a great, great one to listen to. Uh, and it's not just because of what we do, but rather the guests that are coming on have been very interesting. There was one guy who was, I mean, there's others we haven't even aired yet. One guy talks about kleptocracy and like all these big, big government, like Russian uh, oligarchs who, who steal money and how they hide it. Um, and and all, a lot of them have books too. So if you listen to it and you're interested, you can read their books and learn more about them. Awesome. Awesome. I should come one day on yours. I would love to have you on. You need to I come would on. love. To, yes, yes. I Absolutely. would love to come. Yes. We're going to make it happen. Dr. Fujian in the house. Yes, yes. Um, you know, I created a new psychology model, which has been patented and has been uh, tested in universities. So I could definitely come and talk on that with Let's you. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, last minute, one minute. Anything your heart desires for all of our audience and uh, viewers to know about you? Um, I tell them I love them, trying to spread the love uh, on my Peaceful Warrior tour right now, which is uh, a stand-up tour that I'm touring with all over the place, and I'll be in, in, in North America in the fall, so people can go to masjobrani.com to look at all the dates. I'm going to be in San Jose, I'm going to be in Los Angeles, I'm going to be in Boston, New York, all over the place, masjobrani.com, and they should follow me on social media. It's all at masjobrani, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I post a lot of stuff. Uh, sometimes political. Uh, so if they get offended by Trump jokes, don't follow me. But if you <laughs> are okay with it, then follow me. Well, you were on my other show in LA Talk Radio, and you were upset with Trump at the beginning. So you, we all, we all know what you believe in. Do you know who's coming next after you? Who? Navid Nagahbad. Oh, tell him I say hello. He's, I uh, told him about your podcast. He didn't know about your podcast. I'm like, oh. did you know Maz's podcast? So I put it on for him on his phone. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. He's one of my favorite people. Give him a big yeah. hug and tell him I miss him. I know. He's, he's amazing. You're both amazing. I actually told him that both of you have this, uh, the two of you and Ostad Shajaria, you are the three people who I have interviewed, which it's almost like, you know, you guys know who you are. You guys know where you are. And you have this um, humbleness about you that is just presents uh, all three of you in such a great place. So I'm honored to know all three of you in that way. Thank you, Dr. Fujian. As they would do in Indonesia, I feel like going like this now. Namaste. Namaste. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so create a wonderful work for yourself and uh, your uh, nephew over there. Thank you for taking on the uh, hi, wait, wait, taking on the camera, camera taking on the camera work for us for a while yeah. thank you Maz. take good care of yourself thank you bye 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 and for everyone we'll be right back with Navi Negahwan
Have you ever wished you could just wake up one day, reach across your nightstand, and hit the life reset button? Let's face it, the struggles and frustrations of everyday life leave millions of women and men around the globe yearning for a new way. And the new way is right here in Life Reset, the awareness integration path to create the life you want by Dr. Fujan Zain. You can get it now at fujan.com or amazon.com. Life Reset, the awareness integration path to create the life you want. You deserve it. Hello, I'm Dr. Fujan, and I have great news for you. I'm offering a special time-limited offer to anyone who's interested in online therapy or coaching sessions. I've developed the awareness integration model, which allows in only 12 weeks to raise your self-esteem and confidence and let go of your thoughts and emotions that produce depression and anxiety for you. So call today to schedule your online session and save $600. Call me today at 818-648-2140. That's 818-648-2140. Or go to www.fujan.com. I'm Dr. Fujan Zain, and I am so excited to have Navid Megahban with us. Navid, though, sometimes call the man of thousand faces, still most widely regarded as Abu Nazir, the enigmatic Al-Qaeda leader. He played for two seasons on the Showtime's Emmy-winning original series, Homeland. He has drawn praise for his roles on Fox's hit series, 24, CSI New York, CSI Miami, CSI Los Angeles, and Law and & Order SVU, The Closer, The Game, Criminal Minds, Lost, Jag, The West Wing, Without a Trace, and The Shield, and so many others. He has credit for 128 acting roles. He has produced 11 films. In 2019, last year, for this year, he's played already in The Sultan as the Sultan in Aladdin and uh, was in five episodes of the TV series Legion. Today, he's with us to talk about two upcoming feature films, Crimea River and Cash for Gold. Hi, Navid. Hi, how are you, Fujian? Thank you I'm so much. Great. Thank you, Avi. I'm doing great. So nice to have you with us. I was just talking to Moz, and he said to say hi. You are one of his favorite people. And um, so there. He says hi. I love him. I love him. He's an amazing guy, and actually, we we go way, way back. Yeah. And uh, by the way, thank you so much for the introduction. My gosh, I'm, you know, I'm starting liking myself now. <laughs> yes, I like you very much, and everywhere I go, I actually talk about your wonderful character. Um, you thank know, you so who much. you are. You uh, you are loving and give time to people, listen to them, you give your ideas with generosity and uh, your humbleness, although, again, you know who you are and where you stand. So I go around bragging about your personality to everyone, just letting you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Tell me about these two new projects. Oh, my God. You've told me a little bit about Cash for Gold. So let's, let's hold on to that for a minute because I want everybody to know about that. But what is the the crime Crimea River? Those are the two uh, you're producing, right? Uh, Crimea uh, Crimea River is um, um, the British based production and is kind of um, as a thriller project. Um, it's about the guy who's struggling with his um, um, with his addictions, his failures, and. Uh, it just happens that he's also dealing with a loan shark, uh, which would be me. So as a thriller, and <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> and um, the project actually was shot in Norway, UK, and part of it here in Los Angeles, and. Um, it will be a fun film. It will be an entertaining and suspenseful film to watch. And um, Cash, Cash for Gold, um, 
I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you, uh, I told you about it. And uh, Cash for Gold was inspired by um, uh, by a short movie which we did a couple of years ago, and NBC Universal really liked it, and they screened it as part of their diversity program. And actually, the writer was inspired. Uh, she's an American, Deborah Puet, who's an amazing, amazing writer and actor. And um, the what's happened right now in our uh, in our country kind of inspired her, and the way that the people are being um, being judged by the way that they look inspired her to write this beautiful story which um, introduces um, uh, two people together to each other, an American woman and an Iranian man who is being looked at as uh, as an outsider and as someone who is not being respected by society. And through the journey, we discover how similar they both are. And uh, they both become very good friends and they're helping the community uh, to change their perspective. Beautiful. And uh, that you. is, uh, what, where are you in the process with that? Uh, Cash for Gold, we already um, uh, locked our locations. We are, uh, we are planning to shoot in Ohio. Uh, we, are, um, we are in the final stages to raise, uh, to raise some money uh, to finish our budget, to get our budget together. Um, the film is being shot on low budget. Most of us, we are um, uh, the, above the line. The, uh, the director, the, um, the writer, the producer, um, all of us, we are coming on board and we are, um, we are, uh, we are kind of working for free. And um, but we just want to tell uh, tell the story. The story is uh, it's very similar to it's a wonderful life. So it's a very um, it, it's a film. It's a film that will bring some awareness. Uh, it will clear clear up some some of the misunderstandings. And um, actually, it's kind of um, it's a film that kind of. Um, kind of exposes the xenophobia that we are dealing with right now and right. allows people to look at the look at their lives and look deeper inside themselves and find the similarities and sort of differences because when you look at it um, in reality all of us it doesn't matter where we are coming from what color we are what religion we have deep down inside our core it's just pure white it's very innocent and if we if we look at each other and if we see that beautiful, bright light inside every person, then uh, we will be able to create a better future. I mean, that's my opinion. So, Absolutely. Maybe I'm, Is maybe there, I'm uh, just a dreamer. How do, they pe how do people even uh, support you with the funding? Is this only funding through uh, specific funders or is it also out there for public funding? Uh, it's also out there for public funding. Um, they can they can easily um, reach out and um, contact me. Um, I just it's very easy to uh, to reach out. You can even um, I mean uh, they can even reach out to my uh, the the email that we have is romaniassistant at gmail dot com. Uh, they can reach out there or um, through the company and. Um, if uh, if they are interested, they can uh, they can jump on board, support it. Uh, we do have a couple financiers who are coming on board, uh, but we still need uh, we still need some help. How does I, I, uh, I don't want I I, 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 I side of me side the producer and the actor uh, in me says oh now you have to take advantage and announce about the same time because I'm talking to you as a friend. I just don't. Um, I I I don't know. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to start promoting my film. I... <laughs> uh, why not? <laughs> why not do that? I think it's wonderful to be able to uh, to get people to be involved in things because, as you said, there are stories that we all want to look at because each one of us have a 
particular uh, story inside of us. But I think that movies and songs uh, bring out the actual experience and emotion of people who are inside and they trigger it and we can connect to it. So many of the things that are happening in life at this point, which each person might experience internally within the same, you know, within their the family system or in their community, when the stories or similar stories show up on the screen, um, everybody relates to it and everybody mo gets moved by it. And then sometimes through this, the, uh, the education actually flows. A lot of people might not necessarily listen to a very serious conversation about these. They might not listen, go to books and actually read. But a lot of people do take on to the entertainment world uh, from the entertainment space. to, And then in the meantime, they get educated about matters. I know that, for example, when um, you know when I saw the movies about capital punishment, I learned so much from the movie, and then I picked up my interest, and then I started looking at all sides of this matter, where before I might have just had my own limited view. So I do think that when you have um, you have stories to tell, which other people need to know and be educated and see all different parts. It's also beautiful for everybody to be able to be a part of it and, and no, feel the ownership of it. Fujian, I agree with you 100%. I mean, this film was chosen out of 2,500 films. They chose only seven films, and the seven films were the films that they were screening at the, um, as part of the diversity program. And uh, we had a screening in New York, and the, the, the interesting thing about the film was that we had audience members who walked up to us and they said, oh, uh, I've dealt with this. Oh, this is a, this, this is a story that I've dealt with. Uh, we, have, uh, we have an African-American gentleman who walked up to us. He's an actor and also a writer. He came up and says, uh, you don't know how, how, how often I deal with a situation like this. So this, this story is not just about an Iranian guy and an American woman. It's about... Uh, is about how we are perceiving each other, how we are looking at each other. We, there's an expression that I always uh, live my life by, it, and I love it, uh, which says you can see the truth when you're blind, and you can hear the truth when you're deaf. Sometimes we are going in, we, before even we start a conversation with the person, we start judging them based on what we have heard and what we were told, so the voices in our head is not actually our voices. It's the voices from someone else who might have had certain experiences, and then they are coming and they are putting those voices in our head, and that's how we are reacting. Or that's how we are responding to others. And I think we should judge people uh, for who they are, not what we have been told they are. And this film, um, the journey of the film, uh, I mean, there are people who are reading it in the industry, and it, the film was also chosen. The script was chosen as one of the one of the uh, hot scripts being made this year in Hollywood. So people are paying attention, looking at it, but we didn't want to. We want to. We want to do it privately. We don't want to go to the studios. We don't want to change. Uh, change the. Uh, we don't want to lose the purity of the story just because we want to have, um, we, we, we want to have support from a bigger studio who might come and say, oh no, change this character, change that character, this story is not working, that story is not working, because the story as it is, we have had readings, the short film has won numerous, uh, numerous awards, uh, the, uh, the script is getting tons of attention, and we just want to keep it as pure as it is. And that's the reason that we are going privately, and um, we could just support. I mean, anybody who who's interested in this kind of stories, I will more than happy to share the financial plan with them. I will more than happy to send them the short film. I will more than happy to share the script with them and all the um, all the reviews that we got for the script. 
And so, um, I know if anyone is I also please. wanted to talk to you about your studio. You have created a studio for other artists in Los Angeles. Yes, there's a center that I'm building. I mean, I'm, I told you before, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was coming, uh, I was coming from Germany, and I was uh, literally, I was sleeping on the street, and I didn't have a place to go. So uh, this, um, this center that I'm building is like a, um, is like a hostel for, uh, for artists. So um, the people, they don't have a place, they can come, they can stay there for short term just to get their feet, I mean, just to get started. And um, the studio, um, the space is... Um, I can house up to eight people in this house, and then the studio space that I have is studio space uh, that is uh, that it can be um, it can be used as a um, as a studio for painters, sculptors, um, musicians, um, and creating a sound room that if there is any musician, they can they can come and do their music, they can record, and. Um, Basically, it's just a safe haven. I, it's something that I wish I had when I came to Los Angeles and I didn't have it. And, uh, but, I mean, thank God I, I'm able to give it um, give it to others. Uh, let's see. Let's Absolutely. see what's going to happen. I'm very excited. You should come. When it's finished, you all should come and see it. Absolutely. I would love to. Thank you. And I know this is like you, you keep playing villains on uh, on screen and yeah. your heart is completely love and you keep giving to everyone in a, in a different way. And I remember uh, right. reading a quote that you said, which is, even when I'm playing a villain, I'm not a villain because the villain doesn't know that he or she is actually the villain. So I have to be the person who does things and are, uh, that that's not who they actually are. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, the thing is that you, um, I never, um, I never went and uh, played a role um, and judged the character. You don't judge the characters that you are playing. Uh, you are just being the character. You are just trying to uh, be as uh, truthful and as genuine as you can be uh, toward your character and the way that you are portraying the character. Uh, it's for the, it's for the audience to. Um, to see what they want to see based on their understanding or based on their state of mind, what they think of the character. The, uh, it's very simple. I mean, um, uh, some, let me ask you a question. Somebody's coming and, um, and um, you're walking down the street. Somebody comes, grabs you, puts you against the wall, and says, put your hand on the wall and spread your leg. Um, who is the person? Is he a hero or is he a w villain to you? I guess it really depends on the context of it, huh? Oh, yes. So who, who is it? Just imagine you're just walking down the street and you're being put against the wall because there was a riot happening in the city. So, you so don't at know this point, sitting... I'm assuming it's a villain because I'm scared at this point. Yes. How about if this person is wearing a police uniform? Is he a hero or a villain? Well, neither one, just the police. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. That's yeah. exactly my point. You don't, you, the situation creates, yeah. uh, creates, the, creates the character. And if the character is good or bad, is he, yeah. if he's a hero or he's, if he's a villain. And, Absolutely. Um, Navid, I want you, thing, I, we only got one minute. And I know you have a meeting to attend to at four. Okay. Uh, tell people how to find you, where to go, and um, in order to support you or, you know, get your, uh, where you are late in, in your latest I'm, film. I'm, I'm welcoming everyone. Everyone, uh, everyone can reach me, uh, reach out. Um, find me on Instagram is Navid Negafon. And um, spelling is N A V I D N E G A H B A N. So my Instagram, my Facebook, and at the same time, the name of the production company is uh, Romani Road Pictures. Uh, so even anybody has access to IMDb, there's a um, there's an email there, so they can reach out through the through the email address um, on the um, on IMDb. 
Beautiful. Uh, Thank I, you so much for place. taking the time Thank and you. being with me and our audience. And for everyone who's out there, create an amazing world for yourself and everyone around you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. KMET, Banning, Beaumont, Redland, and Palm Springs. Virgin Islands compound of others who might have been involved in his alleged sex trafficking. The raid came as Attorney General William Barr warned co-conspirators should not rest easy. This case will continue on against anyone who was complicit with Epstein. Barr also decried what he called serious irregularities at the jail here where Epstein was found Saturday. We're told it's unlikely there's surveillance video showing the moment of death. Certain protocols were not followed. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. The Trump administration announcing new rules for legal immigration, making it harder to get a green card if an applicant has ever used public assistance or even if they would qualify to receive those benefits. This is a huge change to legal immigration for the country. The rule says that not if you do qualify for a public assistance like food stamps, for example, but if you may in the future qualify for public assistance, they